Hey everybody, welcome back to Champ and Sons and our Madden 21 franchise series as we are working our way to the end. Now, I did lose the recording for the last two games of the season against the Chargers and the Raiders. That did, uh, that file got corrupted, so just wasn't able to render it. So we are going to be starting out this episode actually in the first round of the playoffs. And if you take a look, we have got the Steelers coming into town. Pittsburgh is a tough team, as they always generally tend to be. Um, but I think we can repeat what I like to call the, the Tebow miracle. The miracle of that who is Tebow. Uh, whenever he led the Broncos past the Steelers in a big-time playoff game. and I think that was a wild-card round, um, actually. But, you know, still, same sense. Steelers in Denver. We don't have a very good quarterback in Drew Locke. We've got some things that we're going to have to make some great plays to win this game. And getting some minor upgrades from guys. I'm one of the more guys I'm excited to see get an upgrade. Ty Wallace, he's been a big-time defensive lineman for us coming in, especially on the back end whenever we need needed to give some guys some rest and we've had some injuries coming in for us. So Ty Wallace has been a great fill-in for us. And he has definitely earned the upgrade. So here we are, start of the divisional round of the playoffs, facing off against the Steelers. And the Steelers do have a new quarterback. Yes, he is wearing number seven, but it is Mr. Edwards and not Senior Roethlisberger um, in that jersey number, which I'm surprised they would allow another quarterback to be number seven. But then again, this is Madden and not real life because I have a feeling Big Ben's number probably would be retired when he retires. And so, after that first play by the Steelers, they are working their way down the field already at the 44-yard line. And here they come with the quick pass. We're able to get the stop, though, behind the line. And that's going to be a good time, big play for us, and we needed definitely a lot more of that from our defense. Now, second and 11, they're going to be in the shotgun once again as we do bring some pressure, but he gets the pass off a little flick. Off to the right sideline as they do make the catch, come down with a gain of about nine yards and bring up a third and two here in this game. First third down of the game that they're facing, and our defense needs to make something happen. As they hand it off up the middle, we get caught behind the lineman, and then James Conner is able to push forward and pick up five yards when they only needed two as they do get the first down and that is not the best sign for our defense. We have normally been good at stopping the run this season, uh, but that one, five yards, when we really needed a big-time play right there. For the very next play, they hand it off to Connor. Look at that, just bouncing off, fellas, and gets another about 11 yards on that one. So two rushes by Connor, two first downs. That, ooh, this, this, this may be a long afternoon, all right? And... We get a little bit of play action. We get the pressure and bring him down for the sack. Devontae Holt gets in there quickly. That was a hell of a play. All right, now this is the playoffs. This is the final season uh, for our franchise. I know we did three with Houston. Now we got one with Denver. Uh, Madden 22, I am going to be doing a franchise with him. Not sure of the team that I'm going to be going with yet. Uh, and honestly, not sure if I'm going to start it before the scouting update. I kind of think I will because I think they're really designed that scouting system and they're testing it out in Madden as something that they're going to be using for, uh, you know, I guess I'd say the college football game. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the, in the comments. So comment down below. Should we wait for the uh, scouting update to be in place in Madden before we start our franchise there? Or do we, uh, or, or do we go ahead and start it? And so be it. Um, it's a scouting thing. It's it should be pretty big and in depth. But I go more for player development in our franchises once we have them on our team versus scouting them out, right? So let me, let me know what y'all think down in the comments, and we'll kind of see what happens with it. All right. So back to the game. Now we did actually get them stopped. They did get a field goal on us but we got the stop only down by three points and drew Locke's first throw is going to be caught by our sega whiteside making a great play on that one getting over his linebacker bringing up a second and three on our first drive of the game 
As we do a little bit of trickeration, hand it off to Cohen up the middle, and he's going to get zero yards. The Steelers' defense was not fooled in the least on that one. So now third and three. This is our big-time play right now. Third down, we're going to go three wide receivers, one tight end from the shotgun formation. Locks got the snap. Pittsburgh brings a blitz. But we're going to find our man, Jerry Judy, and he got hurt. I'm not sure what happened on that cut. He got tackled after a good game, but he did end up going down injured. So Jerry Judy is out of this ball game. And that's really bad because Gordon Sutton's out of this ball game as well. He's not playing today either. And so taking a look at it, we've got some big things happening, needing to make some big time plays with a second and eight from the shotgun formation. Drew Locke, he's going to get the snap, hands it off to uh, Melvin Gordon up the middle. He's only going to get a gain of two yards. That's his first rush of the day. And look at that, Jerry Judy's not only out for the game, he's out for the damn remainder of the season you got to be kidding me on that one. Oh crap upper arm fracture okay third and six we can definitely try to recover it's going to be an uphill battle but we can we can make some things happen and drew lock drops back and is going to fire it over and our sega white side is going to drop that one you lose your top two receivers and you end up getting some drops that's kind of how it goes isn't it you know what i mean and so now, here we come up on our next drive of the game. We did hold Pittsburgh. Uh, they have not scored again. Um, and we are starting to move the ball on the Steelers' 36-yard line. And Xavier Cohn starting to run like a madman. with picks up a big-time gain on that rush and gives us a brand-new set of downs. Getting us all the way to the 24-yard line. Gain of 12. Just about two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter at this point as we are trying to take the lead. Now Locke is going to be in the shotgun as we have three wide receivers and one tight end in the slot formation. Locke's got the snap. Moving around in the pocket. Fires it over to Melvin Gordon, who's going to hang on to that one and be brought down after a gain of five. And so with that in mind, second and five, we're going to go now under center with two tight ends set um, and Xavier Cohn in the backfield this time. As we send a man in motion, Locke's got the pass rolling out to the right side. He's going to fire it and had a man wide open. Oh, my God. Drew, you got to be kidding me. We had him wide open. We weren't under pressure. I'm not sure how he missed that one. So now we have a third and five. We're going to go three wide with Locke in the shotgun. He's going to get the snap. Kind of rolls back out to the right again. Fires it back over to Melvin Gordon, who's not going to be able to get possession and come down with it. He will drop that one. And so here we go. Our first field goal of the playoffs. And our kicking has been not the most accurate in the world. Kaimi Fairbairn blasts that one through, though. And this ball game is tied, ladies and gentlemen. So now in the ensuing drive by Pittsburgh, they are going to be in about our 50-yard line as they are trying to make something happen. We got a good jump, but just the wrong way as Connor slips right by us and gets about a gain of five yards on that one. So it went from second and ten to third and five, a third and manageable play for them. We need to get some pressure, keep them out of these types of situations, really keep us out of these situations. Now third and five, we bring some of the blitz. They try to go, drop off the screen. We dive, we miss them. Oh, man, Connor, big time gain all the way down to the 31-yard line. Rose almost made that tackle. He went, he gave it his all. Just did not have the speed to catch up to Connor. So Steelers now at the first and 10 at our 31-yard line going in the shotgun formation as they get the snap. We bring a little bit of pressure on them, but not enough. But we're going to intercept that. Hey, Jay Bouye comes in. He's got that one right now. What a play. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. As that one should start a spark for our offense, hopefully, and get us moving down the field a little bit. So now, our offense with new life in us, taking over at our 23-yard line after that interception by A.J. As Locke's going to be in the shotgun formation, once again, handing it off to Melvin Gordon off the right side. Had a little bit of a hole, but it did close up fairly quickly. He's got four rushes for 15 yards on the afternoon after that three-yard gain. So second and seven. All right, coming from the shotgun formation, it's pretty standard for us. Three wide receivers, one tight end as Drew Locke is going to be able to take the snap. He's going to scan over the field. He fires it to the left side. That's going to get his man, K.J. Hamler. And did they give it to him? 
Okay, they did. Granted, it's only like, what, three yards or so at that point? But I saw the ball pop out. Wasn't sure if that was a we're going to give it to him or not type of situation. So now third and four. Drew Locke in the shotgun once again. Scanning over the field. They bring some pressure. He's going to fire. It's going to be intercepted. Oh, no. That is not what you wanted to see. And he's got a free run into the end zone. You've got to be kidding me. Was that Van Der Esch? I think that was. I couldn't read the name. That's who that looked like. Leighton Van Der Esch, who's on the Steelers at this point of his career, picks that one off and takes it home. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. I'll tell you that much. So on the very next, we, they held us where we couldn't get anything going. And so now we're at about the two-minute mark here in the first half, trailing by 10. We, we got him, we held him to a field goal after the pick six. So it should technically be six to three, but because we're idiots, it's 13 to three. And now with a third and two, they're going to fire it over to the right side. He's going to fumble as we pick that one up. And he can't go to her, but A.J. Booyah, he is all over the ball today. And look at that one, getting the fumble recovery. That was a beautiful type of play. And here it comes. I guess I should have seen this coming. Stupid challenge. It was overturned. No fumble. Instead, they get a first down because, you know, that just makes the most sense, right? So now on a first and ten, they're going to fire it off to the left side. And I don't know what the hell their man was thinking. Just could not come down with it. Edwards, 13 of 22 for just about 105 yards and interception on the day. Probably would have a lot better stop. stats if his receivers seemed to give a crap. They just dropped that one like he didn't want any part of it. So now it's second and ten. minute and a half to go in the first, in the first half. As we get the pressure, he fires that one over, and that one's going to fall incomplete. So now, if we make a proper play on this one right here and stop him incomplete, we can take over still about a minute and a half to go, just a little less. And on the third and ten, they drop back, and we bring the pressure. He heaves it up, and that one's going to fall out of bounds. And that's going to give it to us with a minute and 22 seconds remaining to try and make something happen. I think we can do that. Defense stepping up for us. Really, our defense has only allowed six points, right? Our offense has allowed seven, but our defense has only allowed six. And so now, here we go, first and ten. Closing, I'd say, minute of the first half. So 113 to go. Drew Locke is going to be the shotgun as we go five wide here, trying to make something happen, see if we can't get somebody in some space. Locke. Drops back, scans over, fires it to our tight end. He's going to get hit and be brought down at about the 35-yard line. Drew Locke is only 7 of 16 on the day. Not very efficient, uh, but we still have, just haven't had a whole lot of opportunities. Now third and inches, Locke fires it. That's going to be intercepted. How did we throw it that far out of the touch with our guy? They're going to take that one back. You've got to be kidding me. Drew Locke, second pick six of the half. That was embarrassing, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely embarrassing. He overthrew his guy by about eight yards. That, I, I can't believe it. You know, it, this whatever happens in these games, this is definitely the final season. But I'm telling you, if it wasn't, Locke is out automatically. Done. Dunsky, don't want him, don't need him. That is just, oh, my God, that's frustrating to see. And especially when he makes passes like he just made on the out pattern right there to pick up a first down. You know, you, you got to be kidding me. The, the dude's too up and down, too hot and cold. Uh, <laughs> what is that song? He's too yes and too no. <laughs> All right, enough joking around. Let's get back to the ball game here as the second half has begun as we are trailing now 20-3. to three, And we have zero room for error. I've come back from further. All right, but we have zero room for error in this one. And right now we have a first and 10 and approaching the 50-yard line here with Drew Locke is going to be in the shotgun, three wide receivers to the left side as he scans over the field and he drops back and he just heaves it up. You've got to be, oh, my God, tip Drew, K.J. Hamler. He's into the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Denver. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, 54 yards. Talk about a big play. It went from big stupid to big play on that one. 
Uh, I, I'm not sure what we were thinking, trying to heave it up to him. We had him with some space, but Locke just completely airmailed him. And then they fought each other off and couldn't come down with it. And so KJ Hamler makes the catch off the bounce and is able to squirm into that little corner. So we may have something going, all right? Every team needs a little bit of luck to make some, turn some things around, get that big moat on our side. As that one now in the very next drive, we're going to bust in for a big time sack. Devontae Holt, his third sack of the game. He is playing like a man possessed, I tell you what. All right, look at that. He's, he takes on his guy, just sweeps him to the side like it's nothing. Dotson, you didn't stand a chance, you left guard, you. As he gets bull rushed over, Devontae Holt brings Edwards to the ground. Hits him right at that three-second mark and is able to bring him down real quick. So now we have a third and 19. Our defense is stepping up, all right? Our defense is taking this Chitsky seriously. Okay, down by 10 points, third quarter, 12 and a half to go, trying to make something happen. We get some more pressure on him. He's going to throw that one away, and it will fall incomplete. He had his man wide open there on the left side, right in the middle of that zone. He just settled down in it. But that pressure thankfully got to him, and he was not able to get that pass off very comfortably. So now on our next drive, just under 11 minutes to go in the third quarter, Drew Locke rolls out to the right side. He finds our Sega white side. He's going to try to make a man miss, and it's finally brought down by Vanderesh at the 28-yard line. That was a lucky find on that one. As we are rolling out to the right, thinking we're going to have to run, and Whiteside just settled down in the zone on his little comeback. And wide open, find him. I can't believe they made the mistake of leaving him out there all by his lonesome. So now we've got the ball down to the 28-yard line. Here we go. We're trailing by 10. We're 28 yards away from trailing by three. You know, we, we, can, we can do this. There's lots of football left. Ten minutes to go in the third quarter. Drew Locke's going to be in the shotgun once again. And we're going to set up for a little bit of a screenplay as they bring the blitz, and we have the perfect call for it. Melvin Gordon cuts it back inside and is finally going to be brought down after gain of about, what is that, eight yards? That was a pretty decent screenplay. They're blocking for screens normally. And Madden the last couple years has been absolutely atrocious. But that one actually worked out pretty well. So now second and two going under center this time. Two tight ends to the right side. Handed off to Cohen up the middle. And he's going to reach out for that first down marker, but he's not going to quite get it as we do have ourselves a big third and inches. So we're naturally, we're going from the shotgun on third and inches. Drew Locke, three wide receivers set. As he's got the snap right there, got the ball, hands it off to Melvin Gordon. Has a hole. Gordon with the spin move and is finally brought down at the 13-yard line. Nine rushes for 32 yards on the day. Got brought down by two of pretty harsh now. If you ask me, kind of no need for that type of violence on me. Just playing a game, fellas. Just playing a game. So first and 10 now from the 13-yard line. Still trailing by 10 as we're approaching the eight-minute mark in the third quarter. Lock in the shotgun once again. Three wide receivers, one tight end. Gordon offset to his left side. Drew Locke gets the snap. He scans over the field. And he's being chased. He rolls out to the right and will make the smart move and throw that one away. And that's normally not our forte. If we can make a dumb play, we're going to try it. And so after that smart move, we have a second and ten now. Still eight minutes to go in the third quarter. We're going to hand it off to Cohen up the middle. As he runs into a brick wall of orange and white right there. And he actually pushes it forward, gets a gain of four yards, so pretty good power by him. I think he could be a really great running back, you know, heading into the future. So third and six now from the nine-yard line. Drew Locke in the shotgun formation, scans over the field, and they bring in the pressure, but he's got some space. Drew Locke, he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Denver. Touchdown, Drew. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. As we are going to narrow this one down. Look at that, just open space, went running for it. What do we got to lose at this point? I mean, you're already losing the game. So if he gets hit and fumbles or something, well, it don't change our situation. But he doesn't. He holds on, crosses that end zone, and that is a big-time play that we needed to get in. Now, to cut this timing down, this game lasts a pretty good while, so to cut this one down, we did cut out the Pittsburgh offensive possession, and as you can see, they got a nice little touchdown and increased their lead back to 10 points. But guys like K.J. Hamler with 143 yards on the day receiving is able to kind of make that up for us a wee bit. 
as that big play gets us moving those chains down the field and we go from about the 50 to about the 28 yard line as we are driving once again this is a slugfest all right and the punches are starting to be thrown and they're starting to land heavily for both sides right now Xavier Cohn right up the middle, and that's going to be stopped for a gain of about four yards. Cohn, not too bad. 13 rushes, 56 yards on the day. Um, we'd probably like to see it just a little bit higher in the yards per carry, but hey, it's the playoffs. It is what it is. So now second and seven, locking the shotgun. Three wide receivers. He gets a snap. Scans over the field. Is going to fire it to Hamler. Oh, that wasn't Hamler. That was our other tight end. Chauncey, Chauncey down on the left side. Picks up only a couple yards. Oh, Chaney. Picks up only a couple yards. Sorry, guys. Cheney's not a guy that I use very often. Um, brings us to a third and five, and that is how the fourth quarter closes. So, let the man, this is a true slugfest, right? We scored. Well, they started scoring, and then we finally started, and now they're trying to separate it back. So we have to land this one. We cannot swing and miss anymore. As we fire it over, oh my, hoo, 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 hoo. that was almost intercepted. Fourth and five. Yeah, I'm going to go for the field goal. Keep us within one score here in the quarter. So we're one stop away from having this game, ball game tied up because that field that kick goes right through the dead center of the post. And so now here comes Pittsburgh on their ensuing drive. Ahead 27 to 20 right now at about the 26 yard line. As they hand it off to Connor on the right side, he'll pick up a gain of about, I don't know, four yards, it looks like. And then look at that. They, we've allowed 104 rushing yards today. We are the number five rush defense in the league, and we're just getting run over, it looks like. It's now second and six. They're going to be under center. It's a little bit of play action. As they had us fooled up, and they find Connor off to the left side, and they're going to give him that completion. It was only a gain of two yards, though, but it... it that's enough to give them a third and four, which is an incredibly manageable spot for them to be in. Um, it's only four yards. We need a big-time play. We've got to make something happen. So here we go. Third and four as they hand it off. We get some space, but we're going to stop, Connor. That's going to be what we needed right there, holding them to a fourth and two. I know they're in field goal position, but, hey, field goal is ten times better than a touchdown. You know what I mean? to give up, especially when you are trailing. There's only 10 and a half minutes left in this game. I would easily rather be down by 10 versus down by 14, if you know what I'm saying. Look at our, We disrupted it right up the middle. Devontae Holt got through. There's Robinson holding his man up. We That was just a perfect play that we could have used by our defense. So fourth and two, they're going to kick a field goal right about now as maybe we can get this one blocked and nope, not used to that animation stuff. But they do give Drake, kick it through. Uh, and that's going to be now trailing by 10. So we need one point per minute is what we are looking at. So 30 to 20 in our ensuing drive, eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter of the divisional round of the playoffs. Drew Locke's got the snap, multiple receivers set. He's going to fire it over to Melvin Gordon, who actually comes down to the spin move. Tries to break free, but it is finally brought down there right at about the yard line to gain. As that now gives us a second and one in this one. As Drew Locke standing back there, second and one, three feet to go for a first down. Shotgun, three wide. Hands it off to Gordon. Big hole up the middle. Melvin Gordon lowering his shoulder as he... Well, hopefully he didn't get hurt on that. I don't think he did, but lowering his shoulder down, putting it to the defense. And Mika Fitzpatrick. So now first and 10 from the 17. Inside the red zone, Locke is going to be under center with two tight ends, a two-receiver set. Hands it off to Cohn, off to the right side, and is able to make a couple guys miss and drop for a gain of about three yards on that one. Haven't seen him too much in the second half. Uh, probably should keep working on getting him the ball a little bit. So now second and seven, we're going to go five wide from the shotgun formation, Locke. With the snap, they bring some pressure. He's going to fire. It's going to be caught at about the one-yard line. Eight, J.J. Arcega, white side. You've got to be kidding me. He came down with that one. I'm not sure how that happened. Bringing up a first and goal. Five and a half minutes to go. And they're going to hand it off up the middle. Xavier Cohn, he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Denver. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. We are back in this one. 
Man, Xavier Cohn, look at him doing the mile high leap into the stand. Taking it, we've taken that away from Lambo. I, I say that for show. Mile high leap, that's the new name. As we have, we're coming back. We're now going to be trailing by about three points after that touch. And that was a beautiful drive, too. Downside took five minutes off the clock. Right, it was a beautiful but long drive. Five minutes off the clock. We need to make a big time defensive stop. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We do. Actually, we get a turnover. Uh, helps us out on that one. Uh, so we now have possession of the ball. Once again, just under the five minute mark area. And we are going to be driving. All right, this is a big time drive for us. And if you look, Steelers have only gotten three sacks on the day. I say only. Normally that'd be a lot, but when you're Drew Locke and you get sacked about five, six times a game, three is really good. So four minutes to go, fourth quarter, division round of the playoffs, trailing by three. Locke fires it over the middle, and somehow Melvin Gordon actually makes that catch. Locke is now at over 330 passing yards in total on the day. Downside is that all the interceptions he's thrown. So that being noted, we're going to go four wide this time with one tight end. Drew Locke is going to drift off to his right side and fire it over there. And he's going to find, who is that, Robinson? Uh, Roberts. Yeah, yeah, that's, Ken, that's Caleb Roberts. He's going to find him coming across on that drag pattern, pick up a good six yards on that, bring us to a second and four. But this time we are on the Steelers' side of the 50 at the 47-yard line. Locke is going to be in the shotgun, three wide receivers with one tight end. He scans the field. The blitz is coming. He's going to fire it to our tight end. Cheney's not going to be able to come down with it. And that was going to fall incomplete. Bring up a third and four. Three and a half minutes to go in this one. We cannot afford to have to punt the ball away. And so Locke drops back, and he's going to fire it off. And that's going to be caught. Caleb Roberts. Oh, my goodness. Wow, what a play he had. Got some space from his man. And Locke, to be fair, threw a pretty crappy pass, but it turned out beautifully dropping it in. Letting Caleb Roberts use his speed and just run up to it to make that catch in the zone. And look at that. Time to throw. We did throw it pretty quickly, but I will also say we threw it fairly inaccurately. Uh, I mean, look at that. He ran probably a good 20 yards just to be able to, from the time it was thrown, just to be able to make the actual catch itself. Uh, it looks beautiful. I'm not so sure that was purposeful. So, with that in mind, we're now down to the 19-yard line. Drew Locke trying to make some things happen. He's worked some miracles for us in this season already, and he's going to fire it. He's got the man in the touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Denver Broncos have come back to take the lead with that touchdown by J.J. Orsago, Whiteside. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Wow. They just forgot about him as Drew Locke drifted out to the right. And on the run, finds him wide open. They just left him be, and he got right there in that back of the end zone. And we have taken the lead in this game, ladies and gentlemen. 34 to 30. That is how you do it. You come back from 20 to 3, and you outscore them 31 to 10 in the second half. Five total scores so far. And now, but the downside is the Steelers have a chance. It's only a three, four-point ball game, so they will need a touchdown on this one to win. A field goal does them no good. As we are right now just barely under the three-minute mark here with a second and six as they get the snap. We're able to bring some pressure, but he does escape and finds a man on the right side. And he goes down. I'm not sure why he fell down. I guess Edwards threw it to him so hard. Hey, Dalton Schultz is now in the Steelers. That's who that was that made the catch. Huh, I'll be damned. So third and two, coming up. Two tight ends. They're going under center for this one. I'm willing to bet you they're going to be running as we had the move. And they're going to get through third and two, first down. But wait, <laughs> cheating bastards. We're holding, for God's sake. Colton Miller, you bum. Uh, no, I mean, we got past him. I'm not surprised he held. We had a good jump on that one. So that one actually make it now third and seven instead of first and ten coming to the two-minute warning. As they drop back, and they're going to fire it deep down the left side. We're going to go up. It's batted in the air, and we just could not come down with it. Dang it, we are right there. That's the type of play that could end the ball game for you. Okay, so a minute and 57 seconds. The fourth and seven. 
Right, so they are going to have to go for this. this stop. If we get this stop, the game basically over. Okay, from the shotgun formation, three wide receivers. As we don't bring any pressure, but we guard the line, and we get some on the quarterback. He heaves it up. That's going to be intercepted. Oh, my goodness. Ward comes down with the interception, and that should hopefully do it for us if our offense can just finish this one off. <laughs> and they could have. You've got to be kidding me. As Pittsburgh is going to get another chance now. We tried to waste the time off, but I guess a good positive note is at least they used all their timeouts. So Drew Locke in the offense, while they were our heroes today, they were also our failures, I guess, in that sense. Either way, first and ten for Pittsburgh, and then we get a rough in the passer penalty. So why not give them 15? Let's, let's tap that on to it. I mean, what the hell? You know, they need the help anyways, I guess. And they're going to throw the... Oh, we got the interception. A.J. Booya, you've got to be kidding me. He came down with that one. He broke off coverage of his man when that ball was thrown. And that's going to do it. They will give it to us, ladies and gentlemen. We have won the game. We came back and we have beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. And all I can say to that is, oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. A.J. Bouye making the big-time interception there at the end. Big-time plays all game. Ward, also incredible help. Hamler had a wonderful afternoon with well over 150 yards. Uh, and then J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, that man stepped up big-time. As soon as Judy went down, he was already filling in because Sutton was out. But as soon as Judy went down, he stepped up his game and made some big-time plays for us. So we are going to move on now to the AFC Championship game. All right, I'm not sure who we're going to be playing at this point, um, but I will see you all in that episode when we do. Now, while we get moving to that week, I do want to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you have not hit it already. And hit the little bell notification icon to be notified whenever all of, um, we have any Champ and Sons content uploaded to the channel. And with that in mind, I will check y'all later in the next one. Let's see who we got. Cortland Sutton. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Jerry Judy. He's done. Done for the season. So, it is what it is. All right, so we're going to advance on to the AFC title game. Um, we'll focus on that game once we get there. And I will see y'all in that next episode. So, as usual, everybody, stay safe and, well, y'all know how it goes by now, right? Later, y'all.